Hi there, it's me again, your friendly, humble neighborhood stroke assaulter. Uh, yesterday I did two letters of the alphabet, and we're not going to do another one today. Just to slow down the lab. Give me time to think. Uh, so we're going to discuss uh, follow-ups. And then luckily enough, I came up with something for Zed, because at that point I was sitting at Zenith, um, and zero worked better. I might revisit Zed like any other letter. So... Let's discuss follow-ups a little bit. So, one of the things with a stroke is many things are going to be put out of your hands, right? You're going to go to a doctor, um, and they're going to order tests, uh, and then they're going to say, hey, if nothing happens, I'm going to call you back, or I'm not going to call you. I'm going to argue you're going to want to see the doctor, right? Um, you're going to get referrals from doctors for other doctors or clinics or whatever. Um, and sometimes they say they're going to make the referral, but it might take up to two to three months to get into the clinic. I'm going to say you're going to want to follow up with the referring organization just to make sure that, yes, they did the referral and do they have any, do they need any new information? Do they have any new information? Do you have a direct contact number I can get to, to call that place? Right? Um, and this kind of loops back into self-advocacy. So you're going to want to make sure that when you've been given a referral uh, by a healthcare practitioner to another healthcare practitioner or a clinic or for tests or whatever, you're going to want to make sure you follow up. Just give them a little gentle nudge. Hey, what's going on? Everything okay? Anything you need me to do? Anything that I can do? Right? Whatever the case may be. Now, when it comes to dealing with other organizations, uh, be it uh, your insurance company, be it uh, a government organization because you're applying for disability, and be it uh, if, you're, if your event happened at work, the, your workman's uh, insurance organization, uh, be it, uh, now I live in the province of Ontario, so my health care is paid for, so you may have to do some follow-ups with uh, your health care provider, to see what your benefits are like that either may be through your insurance through work or like where I am a little bit a little bit of insurance through work a little bit of OHIP um, and you're gonna want to follow up for a couple of reasons one you might get anxious because I'm kind of there at times waiting for the next referral to go through right so I'm, there's one referral I've been waiting for for a month and a half and I'm just kind of waiting, and it's sort of perplexing. Uh, and this one's for a medical referral. So I'm going to follow up with the stroke clinic at the hospital where I was seen, just to see if they need, want, have anything I need to know or they need to know. And then this will then show the people that you're working around, uh, be it your doctors, your like physio, occupational, therapists, your speech path, your psychologist, uh, whatever the case may be, um, it shows them that you're committed. And then when you're dealing with the organizations that you get funding through, be it insurance or workman's comp or employer or whatever, it shows them that you're interested. And you don't have to fester. You don't have to like, I wonder what's going on. Hmm. You don't have to do that, right? You don't have to sit there and, and wonder and, and, and get confused or perplexed by what may or may not be going on because you'll know, right? You'll know what's going on and you won't have any issues with what's going on because you'll have the latest and greatest information as fast as you can get it. Um, some people may find this annoying when you call them. I don't really care. A couple reasons. One, I had a stroke, right? Uh, two, um, I want to know what's going on. Uh, so there could be a couple things when it comes to follow up. One, just be diplomatic. Hey, just give me a quick nudge, little little reminder what's going on. Um, in other cases, uh, sometimes when I've done some follow up, it, it turns out it was a beneficial thing because things weren't where I thought they might be in that process. So I was able to figure out how to get it where it needed to be. Um, and because of that, 
it was, you know, uh, actually a good thing I did a follow-up because it, it would have been a little bit drastically negative impacting had I not. Um, and, and again, being, being involved in your care, A, is your right. You have a right to that. Uh, B, uh, being mindful of what you need. Uh, again, A, you kind of have a right to that, but B, it shows everyone around you that you're actually concerned with what's going on because of you and your stroke. If you just adopt a laissez-faire attitude, you know, like, eh, it, it'll figure itself out. No, A, it won't. It, it just won't. Uh, and then B, if you don't come off as being concerned and interested and switched on with getting you better, people won't be concerned or switched on about getting you to get better, right? Um, it's not that you won't be taken seriously, it'll just be taken as you've kind of given up, you've hit a plateau, you don't really care anymore, right? Because um, unfortunately with a stroke, yeah, there's going to be times where you're going to want to quit and there's going to be times where you're going to plateau and you know, there's just so many factors involved with the stroke thing that you never really know how that's going to go, right? So that being said, you got to be mindful about your follow-ups, right? Um, not that this is an F for his follow-up, because that's not the case. And part of doing the follow-ups, right, is one, being an advocate for yourself, uh, part of doing the follow-ups is staying involved in your own care, right? Part of doing the follow-ups is make sure that you maintain the driver's seat as best possible, right? You're not going to get anxious because you've checked off all the boxes and you know, hey, uh, yeah, you've done everything you need to do. You've given my name to that other organization or that other doctor, and I'm just waiting for them to call me. Perfect, right? So now you find out who that organization is and you call them, right? Um, and you just say, hey, just touching base, just kind of wondering where I am on the list, right? And by doing that, I think it puts, puts back some sense of control in the stroke because you have a lot of opportunities during your stroke to lose a sense of any kind of control. Well, one, you didn't have any control over the stroke. Two, you didn't have a control over the kind of stroke or what part of the brain or how long you're in the hospital, or how much you need people around you to do things for you, and for how long. Um, and then, you know, you can have an element of control, right? You can't control everything, but you, you can have an element of control over what happens in and around because of your stroke. And that just saying... You know, like, this way you feel like you're involved, right? And if you feel more involved in your planning, people won't be making decisions around and for you. You'll be making decisions with you. And also, you might find out that, hey, that referral, they do have a three-month waiting list. So maybe you can get on a cancellations list. Maybe you can't. Maybe there's other things you can do to help them out, to get you farther along that list. And again, this will all be geographically dependent. So, you know, um, depending on how many people live in your area, depending on how many people need that service, depending, you know, on a whole bunch of factors, you may or may not be able to get in to see them more quickly or not. And I can't predict any of that. So, just be mindful that when you have to be your own advocate, part of that means doing follow-ups. Uh, I've done a few follow-ups today um, and yesterday just to sort of see where things sit. And some of it's been a bit perturbing in a way. Some of it hasn't. But that being said, um, I've organized a conference call uh, later in this month, in about a week, week and a half, um, to deal with some issues. Uh, and that's basically to to follow up and be my own advocate. Uh, I've already got an agenda that I want to follow. Um, they're going to have to follow it. It's basically the way it's going to go.
Uh, and don't be afraid to ask questions, right? This is your stroke. This is your journey, right? So you've got the recovery, the rehabilitation, then the reintegration. Doesn't matter where you are in that journey. You're in the recovery in a hospital. You're doing the rehabilitation to get your life back to where it should be, or you're doing the reintegration to be able to go back to work and get involved in the world again, right? Whatever the case may be, wherever you are in that journey. But right? don't be afraid to ask questions because the only unasked question is the one that could get you dead, right? Now, the only un unasked question is, is the question that you felt embarrassed or ashamed or possibly dumb to ask. Well, one, you're not a neurologist. I mean, if you are a neurologist and you had a stroke, have fun. Um, you know, like if you're not somehow involved in the neuro research, neuro treatment, neuro trauma industry, right? You're not going to fully understand what happened to you um, or some of the resources that might be available to you. So that being said, ask questions, ask all the questions you want and, and any healthcare practitioner that wants to pat you on the head and treat you in a belittling or patronizing fashion because you have a question, well, A, they're a horrible human and B, they need to have a conversation with their college that licenses them, um, which means a follow-up of a different nature. Um, so you've got to be mindful of everything around you. You've got to be mindful of how everything interplays with each other. You've got to be mindful of what you need. You've got to be mindful of the appointments you have going on. You've got to, you know, and when you're doing your follow-ups, be realistic with everyone, right? Be realistic with yourself. Be realistic with that healthcare practitioner, right? Um, when I had the conversation with my neurologist at the stroke prevention clinic, I said, hey, listen, I don't have any skin in this game. You're going to make the decisions around me. Here's my symptomology. Here's my problems. And, and, and here's how it relates to my life, right? What do you want to do about that? Right? And, and he, at that point, told me, you know what? <clears throat> You're no longer off work for three months, so I'm going to make you off work for six months. I'm like, oh. <laughs> was not planning on that one. Um, and then I brought up some medications. He goes, yep, I agree with that possibility. Right? And I'm going to refer you to a specialist, and they're, they're going to make the determination how, where, when, why that may or may not be the right avenue to approach and again i just approach the doctor i've got no skin in this game but i've heard good things about this i want to try that right is that a possibility so he made the referral to a special clinic um and i'm gonna go in for some testing or something like that i don't really understand what has to happen i just know i do um and then from there it's just a matter of it's a waiting game to get into that clinic uh i'm gonna touch base with them once i make this video so in about 10 minutes if that and when you go to your family doctor, right, ask questions. When you have to go to, say, your eye doctor, ask questions. When you have to go to any doctor, right, ask questions. Um, and one of the questions I ask is, hey, are you the one that is the right one to get what I need? Or do I need a referral to somebody else? If I need the referral, please tell me who. And give me a referral so I can go bother them, right? Um, or in other cases, I've already done the research and I know who I need. And I'm like, yeah, I need a referral for this. So just write the note. So when you do your follow-ups, one, be prepared with questions, right? Um, and be prepared to ask any question you need to. There's no reason to hold back anything, right? Uh, in fact, if you hold the question back, I, I would argue you're just going to get more anxious. I would argue that that would probably be the wrong thing to do, right? So on that note, any question is a fair game question. I wouldn't even question the question. Just, just ask it. And if you get treated in a belittling there, there kind of manner, well, I'm just going to ask you, can I have your college number, please? Because I'm going to have to contact the college because you're an asshole. It's that simple. So on that note... <clears throat> I'm going to run away now and make a couple phone calls. And if there's anything you'd like to see me cover, a uh, topic about anything, 
You can either email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com or you can leave a comment down below. Um, and if you've liked what you've watched over the past mm, while, like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, if you know anyone that's currently going through the stroke recovery, reintegration, rehab process, please share this with them. They might get some benefit out of it. Uh, and if you happen to know or watch, observe, either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being uh, facial droop, inability to raise both arms equally, effectively, or at all, inability to smile equally, effectively, or at all, uh, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, uh, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.